Hi, everybody. My name's Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. On one of the last shows, I remember talking about hallelujah and a hallelujah moment and how many times in our lives do we have that feeling, the feeling of unbridled joyousness, the feeling of just, just love, love overflowing, of, lo of that we're human bodies, but basically we're, we're love in motion. And I remember talking about it, and I remember thinking, wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be a prayer? Wouldn't that be an intention? Wouldn't that be a wish for all of us, all of our, our brothers and sisters on this planet to have that experience? And wouldn't it be, wouldn't our manifestations and wouldn't our activities be different if we were having a hallelujah moment, if we were having the moment of unbridled joy? And clearly it would. I mean, what drives us to, you know, get involved in the things we do, get involved in the dramas we do, get involved in the circumstances that are hurtful to ourselves and hurtful to others and hurtful to the planet and hurtful to the plants and the trees and the animals. It's just our lack of that joy, our lack of that happiness, our lack of that contentment. And then the question is, is that hallelujah, is that joy, is that contentment, is that love? really, because it feels like love in a human body. Is that available in a human body? Is that available for us on this planet, even now, even now, with all the seeming separation, seeming disharmony, seeming, well, we know what happens. We know the wars and the, the pestilence and the, you know, how we can move armies of people to fight each other, but we can't move water to, to save people who are in droughts. We can't move food for people who are starving. We can't move drugs for people who need them and the drugs would cure all their illnesses. But because of the distribution of, of monies, because of the, dis, the root disharmony of our lack of that experience of the joy, things don't get moved around. So our brothers and sisters starve. Our brothers and sisters die of thirst. Our brothers and sisters die of disease. And isn't it time that we experienced as human beings the joy of our connection, the joy of our love, the joy of our being on this glorious planet. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? I mean, isn't it time? Isn't it enough? Isn't it ready? Isn't it true? Isn't it real? I mean, almost everyone in this human body, for one reason or another, has experienced a certain level of joy, maybe not the ultimate bliss that has, that's unconditional, that comes just from being in a human body, that comes from just our recognition of that love, that oneness that we talk about. But we know in our heart of hearts that that, in fact, is possible. We know that that's what we really are, that we know that that's what we're really made of, that we are one living breath, we are one love in different bodies. And, you know, let's, let's, let's go. Let's do it. Let's, let's be together. Let's begin those collaborations. Let's connect up. And, and whatever percentage of our being is in that hallelujah, let's bring it together. Let's bring it out. Let's manifest it. Let's create with that. Let's come together in that spark of joy if that's all we have and if we don't feel a spark of joy and we only feel fear and we only feel uncertainty and we only feel craziness and we only feel drama and we only feel terror and we only feel hate then let's pray together let's pray that we can feel the joy because it is there it is what we are it is what we're made of and the time is now. The time has been now. The time is now. The time is always now. And we can be grateful and we can be joyous and we can be loving in this human life, in this human body. And again, as, as I've said many, many times in the past, tonight's guest is a living 
example of that. Harold Becker has spent his life and he's devoted his life to living and sharing unconditional love in all its forms, in all its growing and evolving manifestations. His company, Internal Insights, and he has a nonprofit, the Love Foundation, is basically to empower and inspire people to love unconditionally. And I'm sure we'll talk about what does it mean to love unconditionally? What does it mean to, to feel that joy exploding out of a human body? Because Harold has experienced it, and that's why he's dedicated his life to it. He's written many books, articles. He's been the founder of the Global Love Day, which is spreading all around the globe, is, is having people recognize their love, their connection, their, their oneness, their un potential unconditional loving. And that's Harold just spends his days focused and focused and more intent on, on making that a reality in his life and on this glorious planet. And then we have extraordinary videos by the world renowned and just the most, in some ways, some of the most blissful music makers and people on the planet, Deva Pramal and Mitan, have two beautiful videos they sent us. I think they shot them in Byron Bay, Australia. And then, as most of you know, we're in the middle of this uh, extraordinary international art project where the intent was, again, to you know, spread love, to, to realize love, to recognize our connection. And so we put out this call. We had this vision to create, to have all these extraordinary people create new original art pieces in any format, any size, take as long as you need to, based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. And then the amazing myriad of pieces that have come in from all over are just unbelievable. And we have two tonight from Bonnie Wren and Patricia Gajic. And you'll see, I mean, different, powerful, amazing manifestations of Bridging Heaven and Earth. So again, it's an opportunity to share, to settle in, to experience the joy, pray for the joy, intend the joy, intend the love. Let's make this living life for all of us and our children and our children's children. Hallelujah. So join me in a short meditation, then Harold will be with us, for the videos, the art, and it's an opportunity. So please join me in a short meditation. Thank you. So as I said, the first video tonight is just an <laughs> incredible piece. Uh, most of you have probably seen, we've shown uh, their videos before. Deva Pramal and Mitan, Am Nurdam, Am Nurdam, enjoy.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So uh, that was some video, huh? Deva Pramala Mitan. And the picture you're seeing in between Harold and I is uh, Hearts on Fire. It's a mixed media by a, a great friend of, of Bridging. And she's really a big supporter. She's got us on in three or four cities on the East Coast, Bonnie Wren. And uh, it's just, it was one of the first pieces that came in for the art project. It's just a beautiful piece and very powerful. So, Harold, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So, I mean, I know we've talked about it a lot, you know, personally and, and over the years. H how do you define, like, unconditional love? How did you come into that experience that, you know, that these two words together meant something to me and that I had to, like, dedicate my life to knowing more about it? And then that's the end of the show, I guess. <laughs> it's 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 a, a three-part fill-the-show question. Go ahead. The unconditional love... How it evolved was rather interesting because a lot of my uh, kind of awakening to a greater reality than I had originally been aware of. I was much more of a realist, you know, do everything right, do everything the way everybody says, and, you know, just conform. And all the while not being very happy inside. And then there's the kind of this unfolding, gentle awakening that became louder and louder. And I started to look into myself and I started to say, well, there's more to life. There's more going on. And as I started to look into a whole variety of self-help books, um, tapes, everything I could kind of get my hands on to find out more of who I was, I kind of started to notice that there were certain common categories. Like there were books on positive thinking, there were books on creativity, how I could create my life. There were aspects of like masculine and feminine energy. And then there was this kind of recurring theme about love. And so there's like wonderful books, wonderful ideas, wonderful theories, all this information and yet this concept of love kept coming up. And I noticed that as love was being expressed, it had all these different aspects to its label, and yet there still seemed to be something more. So I went out and I picked up a couple of books that kind of looked at all the major religions. And I wanted to just kind of know what, what all the major religions were about. And when I was done with the book, which was really fascinating to me, is that what I got out of the book was the fact that every major religion had its core message by its teacher that the religion was based on was love. And I'm like, is somebody, not, well, why am I the only one that seems to think and see that it's all about love? Well, as I started to contemplate more about love, I asked myself about this unconditional aspect. And I really thought, well, people say love, but they don't seem to know what it is. They don't seem to know what to do with it. They don't seem to know how to to act on it, they don't seem to, the, the world didn't seem very loving to me, even though all these religions are touting love as a message. So I decided, what happens if I look at it as unconditional love? And I came up with a really, perhaps unique and unusual definition. I took the word love and I looked into it as the aspects of, we use it as a verb, we use it as an adjective, we, I love my job, I love my spouse, I love my kids, I love this, I love that. But when I looked at it deeper, there was more to it. Love had kind of an energy. It had a, an experience about it that seemed to transcend daily affairs. And I kind of started to see that love wasn't so much a thing as it was a way of being. And when I coupled the word unconditional with it, unconditional is to be without limit, to be without condition. So I just threw the two words together. My definition, which is perhaps quite unusual, what people would normally come up with is unconditional love is an unlimited way of being. When we live every moment without condition, without limit, if we don't limit ourselves to who we can be, we're able to express a much greater range of who we really are. And when we look at it and work with it over and over and over again and keep this unconditional love, total self-acceptance, so you accept yourself, you're gonna accept everybody else. If you love yourself, you're gonna love everybody else. We have it kind of reverse in the world right now. We have it the other way where we want everybody to love us. And yet, if you don't love yourself, there's no way a person can love you in return because we don't have that feeling. There's nothing to connect with. So unconditional love is really about self-acceptance, getting to know who we are through and through, knowing who we are, knowing that we create our reality, knowing that we can create a different reality, and knowing that we can actually generate love. If we don't generate love, there's no love. If we don't let love pass through us, if we don't look in every moment in a very practical way and say, I'm resisting this or I'm resenting that or I'm having an issue here, if we don't 
learn how to work with the energy that's inside us, there's really no way to ever express love. And at this particular moment on the planet, it, we kind of have real concrete examples of people that don't love, people that don't accept, people that are not tolerant, people that don't accept diversity. We see what happens when there's no love. Well, where do we trace that back? It's back into the individual. If I can't forgive myself, if I can't love myself, how can I possibly love another? How can I possibly let anybody love me if I don't have it within? What we have within, we give out. What we give out, we give back. Circular flow of life. And it was just so fascinating to me that something so simple, in my eyes, seemed to be completely missed out on the mass of humanity. That nobody's really talking about love in such an unconditional way, although the majority of the population who ascribe to some kind of religion have essentially as their core teaching unconditional love. And so for me it was like, how do we make this practical? How do I make it practical? How can I make what all these purveyors of wisdom have said for thousands of years, make it practical in this moment, this day, something that anybody can readily connect with, use, share, be? And that's how I came to this rather unusual definition. If I live every moment without condition, without limit, if I don't place conditions and limits on myself, I will naturally not place conditions and limits on other people. If I give myself free will, I give another free will, then I get to experience them for who they are rather than who I'm projecting onto them that I want them to be. Then nobody owes me love because I'm not looking to get love You're from somebody. Anyhow. I'm giving love. Right. So it was really not so much a the light bulbs come on, the angels come descending down and singing, and all of a sudden I see the light. It was really more a very interesting evolution of understanding, and I think because of it, very grounded in practical reality so that we can turn around and take this, and you don't have to have a transcendent experience to start being a person of love. You don't have to have any unusual situation in life to trigger this. It's something that anybody can pick up at any moment and begin to work with and start to realize that the love's coming from inside them. It's not coming from outside them. It will never come to them from the outside world. It's got to come from within, and it's already there. It's not something we, we really have to go in and make happen. We just have to let it happen, just let it release. So we have come to a very interesting place with this unconditional love because typically it's, it's been the purveyance of some divine aspect of ourselves that's really so nebulous sitting on a cloud that we can only be loved by one particular entity when in reality in my estimation the way we can actually transform ourselves and the rest of the planet will be literally to learn how to love unconditionally and no longer limit it to just love but actually take it that next step and actually add this word of unconditional and actually be unconditionally loving to the best of our ability in every moment and see where it takes us so. And so when you were doing this process, you were asking yourself those questions, how can I take this almost concept, this idea, and bring it into a life that doesn't experience that in every moment up until this point? And what were the answers that you came up with? The answers were actually were a series of questions, well, why wasn't I loving? In other words, I started to become very introspective, inner analyzing, I started to ask myself, well, why do I react when I see this, that, or the other in my outer experience? Why am I, why am I not loving? And asking that reverse question then ask, makes me say, well, what is it in me that can't love? So what's blocking? What's blocking? What, okay. what is the trigger? Why, why is, in this case, I'm totally at peace with it, and over in another case, I have this, this grand, you know, my own anger, or my own hatred, or my own doubt, or my own fear, and each time I could trace it back to me, I could trace it back to environmental conditions, uh, things that I grew up around, lack of self-worth, lack of self-esteem. And by always coming back to the self-acceptance piece, for me, I learned how to, mis to accept myself just for who I was versus all the expectations that I implied on myself, which then I also... Just by shining light on the fact that you didn't accept yourself. Right. And, and finding out what that meant for me. And because I, I've learned that it's all about me, in a way, it, if I'm going to experience love, I have to be the one that understands the love and the one that gives out the love, which took this whole outer experience of looking at love outside of me to where's the love inside of me, to realize that it's always inside of me. It's really a choice. 
It comes from my thoughts, my feelings. It comes from this total makeup of who I am, which was probably the first step of saying, how do I reach back to the love that's already there? If I feel a distance, if I feel a separation, how do I actually tap into that love? If I'm not having an out-of-body, if I'm not having a near-death experience, you know, those are some rather sometimes dramatic ways to, to find to, love. To cut the onion. Right. Or okay. to create a disease or something right. that is, is so traumatic, outside, traumatic and dramatic. Exactly. Right. What if I didn't want to go that route? It seemed to me that there had to be practical ways of coming to the same awareness of the same understanding. And that's when I started to realize that I had choice in my thoughts, I had choice in my feelings. And by beginning to practice that and, and asking myself, why am I not loving? Why am I resisting? Why am I having this challenge? Then I could start to find out where I picked up on suggestions, limiting beliefs, doubts and fears about myself. And it's been a steady progress. And in any one moment, yes, hallelujah. In any one moment, I have this grand sense of love and I just, it's flowing and it's energetic. And perhaps the next moment, you know, it might shut down for a bit. Now I know the difference of how to reconnect to it. And that, I think, is the greatest aspect of this message of unconditional love, is that it may turn on and off periodically, when we know it's there, we can go back to it. And I don't necessarily think our, our outer leaders, our outer religious leaders and government leaders, I don't necessarily think that they're sharing that message that it's inside us. So where are they going to get it from? You know, where are they going to get this notion that it's something that's already existing? And where are they going to get this notion that it's something that they need to cultivate? I need to cultivate it in myself. And as I learn how to cultivate it myself, I then know how to teach or share or show or inspire others to do it for themselves. To see the love in me is to see the love in somebody else. If I'm seeing the love in someone else, I'm going to necessarily draw the love out of them because I'm not going to focus on what's not happening that's not love. I'm going to focus on the love potential in another and then that gives them a chance to rise up to the occasion to realize that the love's inside them. So it becomes a really dynamic. And also it's vibrational. Absolutely. So, I mean, you're dealing in that level. So And, and if you know the law of vibration, the, the law of resonance in vibration is that whenever two energies come together, if you have a lower vibration and higher vibration, and we're just using this as an example, right. uh, not that one's better or lesser, but if you have somebody that's very down, hateful, spiteful, angry, um, non-forgiving, non-loving, they, they're vibrating at this level. Bring somebody in that's vibrating at love and peace and forgiveness and joy. It's a much faster vibration. It's a much higher vibration. Well, you bring two entities together like that, and the law of resonance says either the lower has to come higher, the higher has to come lower, or they have to meet somewhere in between. Well, what I've learned is if I've learned how to raise my vibration faster and higher to just be love in the moment, to be acceptance in the moment, and I keep my energy here, and I come in with an energy here, if I'm not willing to budge, either that energy has to come all the way up and meet me, or it has to leave, because it will not want to be around me. And that's, in a way, how I've also been able to assist others by keeping my energy and joy and peace and love and harmony, that it's created an opportunity for those that want to, to lift their vibration for themselves to that level. That's a really potent understanding. Well, think about if you and I do that, if we're both focused on love right now, and we're choosing that, and then we go out into the world and we maintain that level of vibration, everyone we come in contact with is going to... Whether they know it or whether not. Whether they know it or not, because they will be passing by this vibration. They'll be passing by a positive suggestion, a positive message, a positive energy, a positive... And they will necessarily pick up on some of that energy, and then they'll be... A little light will go on, and they'll say, wow, I just felt something that I never felt before. It's changing. Absolutely. Energy. Yeah, right. And we're literally, if we focus on love by itself as our sole focus in everything we do, we literally lift the planet. It's kind of like if we were to put a napkin on the table and picked it up from the very center and lifted it up, the entire napkin rises in that conical shape. You lift one point up and the entire collective goes up, which is why it's become probably the passion of mine is that when you know the equation if you know how the system works, you know how it operates, then there's no reason not to. Because if I can be one point, how much can I raise up 
just by being that love vibration. And then what happens when all the other ones do that and others surpass me and they love even more than I do? And, and that's how we literally transcend, transform, shift, bring about a new reality. There's plenty of messages of fear, plenty of messages of doubt, plenty of messages of hate, plenty of messages of separation. How many messages are there of pure love? I don't need you to be anything that you're not. That isn't necessarily talked about in the mass consciousness. You don't have to be any more than what you are. Well, that is a level of self-acceptance that I can express. Bring that to somebody that's never heard that, and that might be the very first time they have permission to accept themselves. Nobody's ever taught them that. Nobody's ever shown them that. I've figured out aspects for myself, and it actually becomes a joy to share this, to see how other people react, integrate, and then share that same concept. And I've watched miracles happen where people just literally gave up years and years and years of limitation just by recognizing that they could accept themselves and love themselves unconditionally. Just the idea that the possibility exists. So you're really saying that in a lot of, a lot of lives they've been so disconnected from their selves, their root, their heart, their heart is so covered or so broken that they don't recognize that seemingly simple concept. And perhaps locked it up into a nice little box so tightly that they're afraid that if they actually open it up, they might experience the love that they've been seeking for for eons of time. And it's ironic to me, and this is one of those paradoxes of life, that the thing we crave the most is the thing we appear to resist the most. People want love in every level. You hear it in the songs and the radios and the music. Everywhere you go, people are seeking love, whether it's physical, physiological, whether it's acceptance, validation. Those are all qualities and aspects of love. And yet, for all that seeking, people have been seeking outside themselves, never realizing that the love that they're looking for is right inside them. It's right there walking with them every step of the way. <laughs> so that's like the so looking for love in all the wrong places. Absolutely. Because they're always looking outside themselves when right in our own heart of hearts is all the love we could possibly want. Need, desire, it's all there. If we can't accept ourselves top to bottom, inside out, if, if there's anything that we resist about ourselves, that's less than love. That's a lack of love. And when there's a lack of love, there's no love. So let go of the resistance. Let go of the limitation. Let go of the label. Let go of whatever it is that we think is not worthy of love. Make it worthy of love. And then all of a sudden, you'll find the love that's always been there. Wow. That is very beautiful. Well, we'll do more. Let's do a, a very beautiful video now. This is the second video from Deva Pramala Mitan. Gate, gate. It is very beautiful. Settle in. You can really settle into this one because it's a, it's a nice long piece. Just let their music carry you. Gate, gate. Enjoy. The Heart Sutra of Buddha. Gate, gate, para gate, para sam gate, bodhisva. Gone, gone beyond, gone altogether beyond. Oh, what an awakening. And actually, bodhisva is the equivalent to hallelujah. Thank you once more. Thank you everybody so much for this evening. It's been <coughs> precious. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. And uh, as you know, we're going to finish this concert in silence. No need to clap. Silence is the biggest gift.
Oh uh-huh. 
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So uh, that was a beautiful video, wasn't it? Gate Gate with Deborah from Alamitan. And the picture you see in between us is called Fractal Embedding. It's an oil on paper by, as I said, Patricia Gajic, a great friend, a former guest on Bridging. And, you know, you'll get to see the beautiful work as, you know, hopefully as I'm talking about, you're seeing the camera you just go through this. The colors are just magnificent. And it's just one of the literally hundreds of pieces coming in from all over the world. So we're really honored to be part of that. So welcome back, Harold. We've got a new picture between us. Yes. It's amazing Magic. how much incredible art is it. Uh, so why don't you talk about what made you start uh, reaching out in, in, a, in a manifested way to all the cities with Global Love Day? I mean, you're in like literally hundreds of countries now, tens of countries. <laughs> As a part of this process of understanding love and sharing love, and essentially, you know, it's like when you start to understand something that can help an individual, then you realize, wow, what if I can share this with other people? What if, if I can actually affect change by sharing what I've learned about myself that is practical, that is uh, capable of being done with everybody on the planet because ultimately we're all human. I mean, there's, there's no difference between you, me, a Chinese, a black person, a, a white, a pink, a purple. Tall, it doesn't short, matter. All, right, absolutely. Right. We want to feel love and share it. We all want to feel love. We all want to share it. We all laugh. We all cry. Right. So how do I make a practical presentation of this idea of love? If it works universally, which I know it does, because if I can do it, anyone can do it, then how to bring it out there? Well, creating the Love Foundation back in 2000 was a way to bring about a nonprofit presentation where we could actually just put it out there in, in a way and in a format that would resonate to a lot of people. A very approachable organization where we could just share this idea of inspiring people to love unconditionally. When we came up with that original vision, the Love Foundation was clear, that vision was clear. The idea of inspiring people to love unconditionally was a little less clear because you know, how do you inspire anybody to love? You know, much less ourselves, we have to do that, but how do you create this? It's how do you make it something that people can interact with? Well, we had some programs that we had ideas for presentations, workshops. And then in November of 2003, November 30th, actually, I woke up with this idea of Global Love Day, Global Love Day for each May 1st. And particularly the subphrase, the subtitle to Global Love Day um, and the motto for the year is love begins with me. Well, this presentation, we created like six lines about tolerance, diversity, acceptance, forgiveness, very practical, and we literally launched it and we started going out into the world and we started sharing this idea, what would happen if we all got together just for one day out of the year and celebrated our humanity? You know, it's funny because back in the year 2000, you know, the, the turning of the, well, I guess that's 2000, we started this thing, we wrote an article, One Day in Peace. And if we could have one day in peace, it's, you know, and energetically, I mean, you really took it and ran with it. We had this one day in peace. Well, and, and that's one of the things yeah, I right. notice is that, that because of all the conflict that's been out on, on planet for thousands and thousands of forever, there's been a tremendous focus on peace. And peace, in my estimation, is a quality of love. Peace... It's not an absence of war only. Right. right, and so many people that are focused on peace are oftentimes back inside afraid of not having peace. Therefore, they're actually in conflict, and they're usually either raging against the machine or terrified with the machine. Love goes above those dualities. Love just is. An unconditional love is really just being an impersonal place, an is place. Because you can say peace, and my experience is oftentimes when we mention peace, People feel peace when you say that. And peace often then is in relationship to war or conflict, which makes it's them opposed. think of... It's opposed. It's an opposition. Right. right. Love doesn't do that. Right. Love, Love has is no one. opposition. There's a one. Absolutely. Of, right. A totality. So where there's been so many one days of peace, there, were, there are lots of those. And they're all very <laughs> beneficial, very vital, very necessary. There has been no day of love and no recognition of all of us being humans on the planet. So we launched this May 1st, and we put it out there, and I think even in the first year, we ended up with a few translations of our flyer. I went out to the, the mayors and the councils and the governors around the country, and I shared it with 
them and said, here's this idea, would you like to do proclamation? And the response was actually quite amazing, because typically a nonprofit's lucky to get one proclamation by their mayor in their town. But to be out of your own state, where you're not a constituent, and to attract with nothing more than an email, a request, like, what do you think about this, and would you like to endorse it, support it, get involved? Well, the first year, I believe, we had about 12. Wow. The second year we did Global Love Day, we put it out again, and we were up to 36 proclamations total. This past year, we got up to 77. And we're getting them from governors, from mayors, from city councils, from county commissions. Uh, even got a senator in Florida this past year. And it's literally, by, and actually went international. We got um, one out of Canada. And then Puerto Rico, which is still a part of us, but not recognized necessarily as a state. By doing nothing more than putting out this practical message of love. And along with that, by putting our message out to like-minded organizations and just literally being a magnet, we started to attract people from different countries finding out about us through the internet, finding out about perhaps word of mouth or just somehow you know, doing a search and coming across it. And over time, we started even having people offer to promote love in their country and we started designating them as volunteer country coordinators. And again, in the first year, I think we had a couple. And we had, I believe, somewhere in the neighborhood of people from 30 countries. Well, in each subsequent year, this past year, we're now up to people from 90 countries. Wow. Who have actually That's joined fantastic. on seeing the vision. And some of these are, are really fantastic inspiration stories to me when I've connected through email and through interacting with them. because. They are in some very difficult scenarios. So we have quite a few that have come out of the African continent. And when I think about them, they've got tribal wars, they've got genocide, they've got AIDS, they've got government they got dictatorship, trouble. they've got trouble big time. Trouble. And here are these essentially at times lone souls who say, I think, I believe, I see, I know. Now that I connect with the Love Foundation, I realize that love is the answer. I've known it all along, but nobody else has been supporting it. Nobody's else been talking about it. So I realized by us creating this message, which then became this idea of Global Love Day, just putting it out there, now all of a sudden we've created a virtual network where people have a form to work with because they can take what we're doing and promote it locally in their own community, in their own family, in their own country. And we don't designate what they do with it because our experience has been that these people already get the vision of love. And I feel like every time I get a contact like that. I, I literally want to bow before them when I think of what I do and the effort I put in and the fact that these people are doing it in the situation that they're doing. I'm so humbled by it. And they're doing it against odds that I can't even conceive of. And yet the message and the understanding of love is so paramount in their life. They're willing literally to risk everything to bring this message to their people because they see nothing else has worked. No money that you throw at them is going to ultimately work in the long run. No, no thing that we can do to protect them if they don't start loving themselves and each other. There's not enough collective within their own communities, their own nations, to bring about the shift. And they're willing to do it. Just by a little concept of a message, an idea that we initiated and put out there. And it's been a fascinating journey to see each year the almost explosive response. Each year is building on it with it more and more responses, the words getting out there. Yes, I'd love to say we have 10,000 in some countries. Maybe there's one or two, but I can tell you that one or two are so potent. I'll take them over 10,000 mainstreamers any day because they believe Yeah, it. they're on fire about Absolutely. It. And they see that it's, it's really about an unconditional love. It can't be a conditional because the conditional love is what has got us into all yeah, the troubles all, all the years. That's all the separation. Right. So it's been a fascinating journey to see all the myriad ways that we can come up with. One of the things we, we launched in, in addition to Global Love Day is if that wasn't a big enough project to undertake, we decided let's throw in an art essay poetry invitational. Yeah, which that's we about did what we did. Complimentary. So like we're both lunatics. And, <laughs> and like, I'm thinking, thank you, everybody. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. I'm like, right. well, as if yeah, we don't have, have enough. To. Right, you have to. What we realized is yeah. that by putting it out there, because our message is created mainstream and because we know that a lot of the power is in the children, 
that isn't necessarily, especially here in our country, always an accepted message, how do you reach the children to expose them to this message, to let them recognize what they already know, create an art essay poetry invitational amongst all the things that they're going through as kids in school and what have you, all the things that they're exposed to, what happens if you give them, like through an art teacher or an English teacher, they get the assignment and they actually, for one day, that entire class of 20, 30, 40 students sits there and focuses, contemplates, writes, or does art, just on unconditional love or love begins with me. That is so potent because that means there's a collective interacting and for one moment... Yeah, energetically, moment, it's like acupuncture for the planet. For one moment, they're not playing a war video game. For one moment, they're not fighting each other. For one moment, they're not in competition. It could change the whole momentum. Absolutely. Right. So we launched this Art Essay Poetry Invitational and very specifically worded it so that it would be recognized there are no words of competition. We have finalists as a way to recognize we give out certificates as a way to recognize. We have finalists for each of the categories, and then I have, we call them uh, director's award for each of the categories. And we open it up internationally for everybody. And I have literally been amazed at what's been mailed to me, and I have no idea how these people are finding out about it. And yet they're mailing in their little poem or whatever piece of art they've created. I've gotten boxes with the clay in it where they've created something out of clay that they, they expresses love and each piece has an energy about it that you can't describe because there's no fear, doubt, or hate. That's a very low vibration. This is pure love and love begins with me as that additional message brings it back inside them. So they're not just like all about unity to the planet. Great notion, but if they don't recognize yeah, they're part of the planet, them, right. then there's yeah, still something outside it. Right. So we've been quite fascinated as this has unfolded and, and gotten greater recognition. We've, we've said with just a little bit of, of additional exposure in the right channels, you know, would take a whole lot of us to go through all these submissions because, you know, sometimes I wish, like, well, it would be nice if we had a lot. We can barely handle the ones that come in and cheer through our volunteer network just to go through them, to sort through them, to, to give them all an honor and literally to sit because in our case we're not judging them for how technically perfect they are or how well they convey the message we are looking for which ones do convey the message it can be a Crayola drawing of stick figures and yet if those stick figures make you want to almost cry because you feel the love pouring out that's what attracts us they're all wonderful and yet certain ones will rise to the surface when you look at that piece of art or you read that poetry or you read that essay and as you notice, I said all three. Most people do an art invitational, they do a poetry. No, we had to do it big time. We did I it understand. all. And we did that because I know for me, I never saw myself as an artist. I saw myself as a doodler. So if I don't necessarily see myself expressing an art, I might think I can write poetry. What if I don't think I can do either of those? I might want to write an essay. Well, a child at three can do an art Crayola for us, and we welcome it. And somebody who is more adept at writing at a much older age, we have opened up to where we now accept submissions for children of all ages because we started finding out that so many people felt they were being left out because we'd made it kindergarten through college. And we just decided anybody that wants to express love, bring in that art, bring in that essay, bring in poetry. And they have so many categories that nobody can say, well, I don't know how to do that. They can produce yeah, whatever. We were talking at the break that if it's not infinite and inclusive, why bother? Absolutely. And so, I mean, all the projects I think are coming out of that opening heart or that open heart, you know, have at least much more of that quality. Right. And, and I think when we, when we infuse love into absolutely every aspect, love doesn't have the duality. And I knew when we created this invitational, for example, that it couldn't have competition. There couldn't be a winner or a loser. It exactly. made no sense to me. Right. So when we went to write just basic guidelines, we made sure that every word was selected for that purpose, that every word that we put out is about love and unity. It has to be. Well, when you put out that message, you do keep that vibration high. When you keep that vibration high, it's amazing how many people literally crave that love and will respond to I, that love. I mean, it's just the hearts are crying. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's the thing. I mean, the way I look at it, the way I look at what you're doing in shows like Bridging is to heal the heart of the planet, you know, in, in essence, in a way. And we do it one person at a time. 
Right. And that's what we have figured out. It is one person at a time. It is up to the individual. I can't make anybody get any of this. If they want to, I can guide them, I can show them, I can give them hopefully some inspiring ideas. And yet, each of us has to take that journey. There will be no love coming from anything outside them when really understood. We're the ones that have to walk through that doorway. We're the ones that have to embrace love. Have the love. intent, that, that desire, that hunger, that prayer. Absolutely. And then, and then the experience. And you it. literally ask them, why do I do this? I, I do it because I so understand and believe that love is what will heal. When we get to that space of non-duality, and only love can take us there, and it isn't something outside of us, then the solution is obvious. Now let's practice it. And it's in the practice that makes it actually happen. Yeah, you know, but in some way, I really think that if we're having that experience, it will manifest. Absolutely. So the question, and we're seeing, now we're seeing that. And we're, we're seeing it because you are taking off your layers. You're willing to do things like this. You're willing to broadcast that message. You're putting yourself out there saying, I don't care what people think. This is what I'm doing. I'm talking about love. Anybody who runs into me or the Love Foundation, it's right. all about love. I'm not, not, I have I, no interest about anything else. Right. It's about love. And you know, amazingly, we're coming to the end of the show. I mean, these things go so fast. So really, you know, it's just an opportunity. Please, we need to all take it. We want to take it. If you need, want any information about Harold, the artist, uh, Deborah Primala Mitan, Alan, 805-687-2053. Good night. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Good night.